Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. Back in chapter 5, this time we're going to be looking at section 5-7, the Pythagorean Theorem. Our objectives are use the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse to solve problems and use Pythagorean inequalities to classify triangles. For vocabulary, we have Pythagorean triple. We've got four warm-up questions. I'd like you to pause the video, work on these, and turn the video back on when you are ready to check your answers. See you back in a minute. If you have any questions about any of those four, please bring them to class. You might be able to figure them out if you pause the video and take a look at the work. All right, let's move forward. The Pythagorean theorem is named for the Greek mathematician Pythagoras who lived in the sixth century BCE. And I know you remember the Pythagorean theorem which says if you have a right triangle and you name the sides, I'm going to just call them leg one, leg two, and hypotenuse, then you have this relationship where the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs. Now, typically we call these A, B, and C, and we look at this as C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. But remember that A, B, and C are not specifically tied to specific sides, and we can just call them leg one, leg two, and the hypotenuse. All right, let's go ahead and use this in example one. When it comes to deciding which side is leg one and which is leg two, it honestly doesn't matter but it does matter which one is called the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite the right angle in the triangle. It's also always the longest side in a right triangle. If you don't have a right triangle, you don't call it hypotenuse and leg. Okay, let's write down the relationship. Hypotenuse squared is equal to leg one squared plus leg two squared, and then we substitute in. Since the hypotenuse in our example is labeled x, we're going to leave it as x, and then we have 2 squared and 6 squared. 2 squared is 4, 6 squared is 36, so we have an x squared that's equal to 40. We take the square root of both sides, and on the left-hand side, we end up with x. On the right-hand side, we remember that 40 is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4, times 10. So that means x is equal to 2 root 10. If you don't remember how to simplify radicals, definitely come in for extra help or go to math lab because this is a skill from Algebra 1 that is very important for us to know. Let's take a look now at question B. Again, we're going to label our sides. Leg 1, leg 2, and hypotenuse. And then we're going to set up our equation. Hypotenuse squared is equal to leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared. Now let's do the substitution. We substitute in exactly what the expressions are in our diagram. And now we're going to do a little bit of a flashback because we need to FOIL. And so just a quick reminder, when you have a plus b squared, that is equal to a plus b times a plus b. And once you learn the pattern, you will remember that that's going to be a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. When we follow the pattern, we end up with a, x squared is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then plus 4 squared we know is 16. So we have an x squared on both sides, so we subtract x squared from both sides. And we have a 4x on the right-hand side that we're going to put on the left-hand side. So we're going to have 4x is equal to, and then we have 4 plus 16, which is 20. That means x is equal to 5. We have found the value of x. x is equal to 5. And again, if you have any questions about this, definitely bring your questions to class. Now, on the next page, there's a couple of triangles for you to practice on. 
Work on the Now You Try questions A and B and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. You probably found that these were pretty straightforward and you didn't have any difficulty. In both cases, the hypotenuse was the X, but we did have some FOIL practice in question B. Let's take a look now at example number two. We have a real world application and of course the very first thing we're going to do is read and then if we need to draw a diagram, we're going to draw a diagram. So it says, Randy is building a rectangular picture frame. He wants the ratio of the length of the width to be 3 to 1 and the diagonal to be 12 centimeters. How wide should the frame be? Round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So let's start with a sketch of the picture frame. Here's our rectangular picture frame. In order for the ratio of the length to the width to be 3 to 1, and we don't know exactly how long it is, we're going to say that the length is 3 times some number x, and the width is 1 times some number x. The other piece of information that is given to us is that we want the diagonal to be 12 centimeters. So you may see that we've got two right triangles on our hands now. So we're going to set this up. We want to know how wide the frame should be, which means we want to find x, but in order for us to do that, we're going to have to work this triangle using the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing value, which is not the hypotenuse this time. So we start out by writing down our Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse squared is equal to leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared. And by identifying on our triangle which one is leg 1, which one is leg 2, and which one is the hypotenuse. Now we can use some substitution. Our hypotenuse is 12, so 12 squared is equal to leg 1 squared, so that's 3x quantity squared, plus leg 2, which is x, and again squared. Let's start to simplify these expressions. So we have 144 is equal to 9x squared plus x squared. Altogether, that gives us 10x squared because we combine like terms, and that means that eventually we're going to divide and we're going to have x squared is equal to 14.4. We know that we want to find x, not x squared, so we're going to find the square root of 14.4. We know we want to round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, so we're going to say x is equal to 3.8 centimeters to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. As far as word problems go, that one was very straightforward. Now you've got a now you try problem and you've got a diagram that you can use. Use this picture frame as a problem as a model to work on the latter pro problem and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your work. If you had some trouble with the conversion from feet back into inches, then ask in class, but hopefully you're able to follow the work and are ready to move forward. A set of three non-zero whole numbers, A, B, and C, such that it follows the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, is called a Pythagorean triple. We have some examples of Pythagorean triples. We have three, four, five. We have... 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. You may see some of these combinations in some of the triangle questions that we work on, so just be on the lookout for those. If not, of course, we can always figure it out. We're going to take a look now at example number 3, identifying Pythagorean triples. In question A, we want to be able to determine if the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. But in order for us to do that, we have to find the missing side length. Let's label it. It's the hypotenuse. Next, we're going to set it up and see if it does follow the Pythagorean theorem. So we start with the Pythagorean theorem and then substitute in the values that we know. Next is doing the math. So 14 squared is 196. 48 squared is 2,304. When we add these two numbers together, we get 2,500 or 2,500. We know that this is equal to 5 squared times 10 squared. And that means that we can simplify. We can take the square root of both sides, and we can end up with c is equal to 50, which is a whole number. We were trying to see if we had a set of three non-zero whole numbers that 
made the Pythagorean theorem true, and this combination does. So our final answer is going to reflect that. 14, 48, and 50 form a Pythagorean triple. Question B wants us to find the missing side length and then tell if the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. So again, we're going to start by labeling our triangle. Once our triangle is labeled, let's go ahead and write down the Pythagorean theorem. We can write it either way using the vocabulary hypotenuse and leg or c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Either way works perfectly fine. Next, let's show substitution. 12 squared equals a squared plus 4 squared. And here we know that a squared is going to be equal to 144 minus 16. That means a squared is equal to 128. Now, we want to be able to rewrite 128 so that we can evaluate square root of a squared, we know is a, and that's going to be equal to the square root of 128, which we can rewrite as 2 times 64. So we know that a is equal to 8 root 2. Now, the original question, if you remember, was tell if the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple, and the requirement of a Pythagorean triple is three non-zero whole numbers, a, b, and c, that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. As it turns out, 8 root 2 is not a whole number, that's an irrational number, so we have no Pythagorean triple here. Using these as a guide, you have four Now You Try problems to practice on, and you will turn the video back on when you're ready to check your work. I know you can do this. Good luck. Once you check your work on these four questions and you're ready to move on, we're going to be talking about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So just a reminder, if you have any questions about any of the problems we've done so far, bring your questions to class. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem helps us to prove a triangle is a right triangle. If the sides follow the relationship, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two sides is equal to the square of the length of the third side, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If it does follow that a squared plus b squared equals c squared relationship, then we know we have a right triangle. Now, we also have a way of classifying triangles using the Pythagorean inequalities theorem. And that says, if we have a triangle ABC and we label the sides lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c, with c being the longest, then if c squared, or the square of the length of the longest side, is greater than a squared plus b squared, then we know we have an obtuse triangle in ABC. If C squared is less than the sum of the squares of the other two sides, then we know that triangle ABC is an acute triangle. Let's take a look at example four where we're going to use this new knowledge. Remember, in example four, we're trying to classify the triangles. The instructions say, tell if the measures given can be the side lengths of a triangle. So that's our triangle inequality theorem for one triangle. Then it goes on to say, if so, classify the triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. If we cannot use those three sides to form a triangle, explain why not. So let's start with example A. We start out by adding the smallest two side lengths, and we need to see if, in fact, they are larger than the third side length. In this case, they are larger, so we know, or the sum is larger, so that we know we can create a triangle with these side lengths. Next, we're going to set up c squared, and then we're going to leave this blank for right now. The equal, greater than, or less than is what's going to go in there. And then on the other side, a squared plus b squared. So let's substitute in. Remember that the largest or longest side is the one that goes on that left hand. So that's going to be 10 squared. And then A, we can make it 5, and B, we can make it 7. It doesn't matter if we reverse them because they're just two legs. 
Remember here again, we don't know what goes in there, so we're going to first evaluate the numbers, and then we're going to see which one is greater than, less than, or equal to. So we have 100 on that left-hand side. We have 25 plus 49. 25 plus 49 gives us 74. Remember, we're comparing to 100, so the end result is that 100 is greater than 74. C squared is greater than A squared plus B squared, so we know that the triangle is obtuse. Now let's take a look at B. Again, we're going to start out by adding the smallest two and seeing if the sum of the, the smallest two is larger than the third side. We end up with 13, which is not greater than. So we cannot form a triangle with these three side lengths. Next, you know you're going to have some practice with the Pythagorean Inequalities Theorem with some new Now You Try problems on the next page. Just a reminder, first you're going to see if you can create a triangle with the side lengths given using the Triangle Inequalities Theorem. Then you're going to try to classify the triangle as acute, obtuse, or right using the Pythagorean Inequalities Theorem. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Remember, always bring questions to class. You're ready to get started on your homework and then move on to section 5.8.